Hello guys, in today's episode we're going to discuss two most popular editions of Camunda once again. Although this time we'll see some process management basics. In this tutorial we'll learn how to use the engine, deploy the process definition, start it, and also I'm going to show you how to query the engine to retrieve some more information. Business process management is an approach for management that concentrates around optimizing business processes in various organizations. To some extent, we could possibly divide it into two channels. The business one, which would be specifying the high-level aspects, and on the other hand, we would be focusing on the technical one, which would be implementing them. Using Camunda for the business process automation begins with architecture and business decisions, but at some point there must be a process and it must utilize its logic according to the requirements. So how to deploy a process that already has been modeled? How to launch it in the Camunda engine? How to query the engine and retrieve some data about the processes and their instances. We will showcase some basics regarding process management, which will be a good insight on how to enable process automation with the Camunda using both embedded and standalone editions. For the first approach, we will be using a project that just got generated from the Camunda initializer. There are actually several ways to deploy a process into the embedded edition of Camunda, one of which could be through the REST API if it's included in the project. However, we will start with this approach in the standalone edition, so this time we will go for something more Spring Boot specific. To deploy a process definition, just simply place it in the resources directory of your project, and for this tutorial purposes we will be using a very simple process with only one human task involved. As you can see, this is an example process.bpmn that we will be using in this tutorial. After placing the process in the resources directory, just start the Spring Boot application and the deployment should be done. This is fairly simple and straightforward, though in a production environment this approach might not be the best to go for as it requires you to reboot your application every single time you want to deploy a static resource. Now that the process is deployed, let's query the engine and see if it's actually there. For this purpose, we will need some custom implementation, so first, let's build a controller class which will receive our HTTP request. Camunda controller is a REST controller class that for the moment will hold only one method, which is supposed to retrieve information about the deployed process definitions through custom Camunda service. Camunda service class will hold methods which will be called in the controller as a mediator between the application's client and the Camunda engine. In this service we are implementing a method called getDeployedProcessDefinitions which does the job for us using Camunda's repository service. The return collection which will be response for the HTTP GET request is mapped to our custom model called ProcessDefinitionDT. The ProcessDefinitionDTO class is supposed to utilize mapping certain properties that Camunda Engine will return in the service and which we want to return to the application's clients. Now, if you follow these steps and you hit the process definitions endpoint of your application, then you should be able to see the information about the deployed process definitions. And as you can see, this is an example response for process definitions request. The response body is exactly the reflection of our process definition DTO entity. To start our deployed process, we will implement another method in the Camunda controller, although this time it will handle POST requests. This will also require another custom method in Camunda service class. This method will retrieve particular information from the runtime service. As you can see, creating custom Java implementation around the core of Camunda gives us many advantages, like for instance additional logging. The start process method will use one of runtime services features, which is starting the process instance by key. Now, if you send a HTTP POST request on process, process key start endpoint, then you will get a 204 no content response and your process should start immediately. Now that your process is running, we can also verify that by querying the engine again. Just like before, we are going to need another controller method and the corresponding service method. This time, our controller will receive a GET request and upon receiving it, the service method getActiveTasks will return the information about the active and running processes. It is utilized through Camunda's task service and our mapping for a custom entity called DaskDTO. As you can see, this is a TaskDTO entity which will represent the structure of HTTP response. 
Now let's jump into the embedded edition of Camunda. For this tutorial's purposes, we will be using Camunda BPM Run. To get it up and running in your local environment, just follow the tutorial in the description of this video. To deploy a process definition, we will send a HTTP POST request, and if you configure it properly, the process should get deployed. The response for a correct deployment should look like the following. Now let's find out if the process got registered in the Camunda engine. To achieve that, we'll send another GET request towards our standalone local instance. The successful response should return the information about existing processes definitions, amongst which we should find our freshly deployed process. Now, once our process is there, we are ready to run it. As you can guess by now, this will be done through another HTTP request. As you can see, part of the URL is a parameter that needs to contain the correct key of the process that you want to run. The successful response should return the following information. The last step would be to verify if the process is indeed running and this time we will also achieve it through another HTTP request. In response, we should be able to notice that one of the active process instances is indeed the one that we just started. Going for the embedded edition of Camunda, the process management is very simple. It only requires some basic knowledge of Java and Spring Boot development and of course some fundamental knowledge about the Java API of Camunda engine. Though it requires some custom coding, it is simply providing developers a possibility to implement complex solutions adjustable to the needs of business, such as specifying response structures for the application's clients. On the other hand, there is also a standalone edition like Camunda BPM Run. Basically, it provides all the features that we could explore in the embedded edition, but it does not require any coding, therefore maintaining such a system might be a little bit easier. Having said that, we need to note that the bottleneck of this approach is that there is less flexibility if you are looking for a custom solution around the engine itself. This was basically just a nutshell of what kind of features and functionalities Camunda provides. When it comes to a process management, all of them are referenced in the documentation of Camunda engine. Regardless of the addition, the business goal can be reached in various approaches and it's only up to you which solution are you going to go for. I hope this video will make it easier for you to spot the differences between how the process can be managed in both solutions. The decision you will make will definitely impact the way that your service will be deployed, including static resources as well. Different solutions will also probably impact the performance of your system, so choose wisely. That's the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Until the next time.